This is a 1960 Mercedes 190SL. We've just completed a 2000 hour full restoration of the car. Our aim was to take it back to factory original condition wherever possible. It's painted a very rare color called Dolphin Blue. It's a very vibrant end of the 50s, beginning of the 60s hue, and I think it suits the car perfectly. Inside, it's finished in contrasting dark blue leather and a black soft top rounds off the picture. Now, when we received the car, it had some serious structural issues with rust in sills, floors, chassis members, inner and outer wings, etc. We only see the full extent once the car has been completely disassembled and the body taken back to bare metal. We literally have thousands of pictures documenting each step of the way. During the restoration process, we were replicating the technologies used by the Mercedes factory back in 1960. So whenever they used spot welding to join body panels, for instance, we did the same. We'll also be using a process called lead loading in many areas to get perfect panel gaps, uh, fitting of light vessels, the grill, etc. This is a very, very tedious process, but it's the way it was done back then, and it's the only way to do it now. We also need to understand that these cars were completely built by hand. So no two vehicles are the same. Basically, what this means is that if you take the door of one car, it won't fit another. It's really unthinkable in today's world with extreme tolerances and repeatability. Once the bodywork was done and before paint preparation, we even had an independent expert coming to our workshop to assess the quality of our work and to issue a report. So there are definitely no surprises lurking under this bodywork. We used panels from Mercedes Classic and independent specialists. One anecdote, this right rear wing is possibly the last new old stock part existing in the world. When we received it, it had a Mercedes sticker dated 1971 on it. So this is the effort we went through to really ensure that we were using parts that are as original as possible. Now, when you assess the quality of a restoration, you'll be looking at how the paint was applied, the consistency of the panel gaps, and the quality, fitting, and shine of chrome parts. It takes a lot of hard work to achieve the right quality, and literally, the devil is in the detail. Now, I mentioned earlier how important originality is to us, and one example is that we sourced original light bezels that have the name of the manufacturer engraved into the perimeter and carefully restored them rather than going for modern reproduction parts missing the text. Another example are these indicator lenses, <clears throat> the new old stock and have a specific text engraved into them. Looking inside, seats, dashboard and doors are clad in sumptuous leather. It's very important to get the right stance on the seats when you restore them and I think that our upholsterer has done a fantastic job. We also took great care to use leather with exactly the right grain or structure that the way the factory did it back in the 1960s. They had a German supplier called Roser. Now obviously they're not available anymore but you can get leather to match their specification and we also double checked with Mercedes Classic to make sure that we have the right look. Big Ivory steering wheel, classic chrome instruments. Everything is designed to look great. Function follows form, one could say. These days you obviously need hazard lights. The cars didn't come with them, so when it became compulsory towards the end of the 60s, they were converted. Many Mercedes dealers simply drilled a hole in the dash to the left of the steering wheel, and this is how we received the car. Now, rather than placing an aftermarket switch under the dash or converting one of these other knobs, we had a switch manufactured to look exactly like the original ones. So this is the original paint identification plate that we sort of perfectly cleaned and put back into position on the A-pillar. These cars only came with rubber mats up front. 
Many restorers put carpets here as well, which is of course fine, but this is the way they left the factory. I mentioned earlier that we were replicating factory production technologies. Spot welding the outer to the inner wing is a case in point. We were careful to have the right distance between the spots and to not make them too perfect. After all, these cars were built by hand and not by robots. Another unique feature is this air intake box. It's made of cardboard and was broken and in a terrible state when we received the car. Now you can buy a reproduction part made of plastic, but we felt that they simply don't look right. So actually an artist friend of mine carefully repaired the cardboard and we repainted it. I believe it turned out great. Then we have this indicator relay. They came from Bosch with the text printed on them. Since it wears off over time, most people simply put a sticker on them. Instead, my creative electrician recreated the letters exactly and printed them onto the surface. I actually haven't seen this on any other car. A word on the technology. When these cars were introduced in 1955, they looked a million dollars. But unlike their big brother, the 300 SL Galwing, which was basically a racing car for the street, these cars used the technology of the mid-size Mercedes sedans of the time. So very robust technology, um, but they're actually very fun to drive. They have comfy seats, a very fluid suspension. It's a perfect car to go for a cruise on a hot summer day with the top down. Now we put a lot of love and care into this car and we really strive to make it absolutely perfect. It is now looking for a new home. If you would like to be the new owner, don't hesitate to contact us.